It's 2 in the afternoon on Thursday, October 2nd here in Korea. Live from Seoul, I'm Na Hyun Gyeong. And these are the stories we're following at this hour. North Korea is thought to have carried out another engine test for an intercontinental ballistic missile. That claim made by a U.S. think tank based on satellite images. A group of Japanese pastors visit a weekly rally in Korea aimed at raising awareness of Japan's wartime sex slavery. And one of Asia's biggest movie events, the Busan International Film Festival, will open its doors tonight. We have some of the scenes from a celebration on the eve of that event. And we begin with North Korea this afternoon. Reports coming out of Washington suggest the regime has conducted another engine test for the KNO-8. That's North Korea's intercontinental ballistic missile. Now Pyongyang is also suspected to have upgraded one of its major rocket launching sites. Our Kim young gil has our top story. U.S.-based think tank 38 North says satellite imagery shows the missile's first stage engine was tested in mid-August at the Sohe launch site in North Korea's northwestern Dongchangni region. This adds to a series of engine tests Pyongyang has carried out since 2013. It remains unclear how successful these tests have been, though. Security expert Joel Witt, who runs a 38 North website at John Hopkins University, says North Korea could be moving on to full-scale tests of the KN-08 because these kind of engine tests are normally stepping stones to that end. The missile is believed to have a range of at least 5,500 kilometers, which means the U.S. state of Alaska is within its range. North Korea is not only testing engines either. It has also completed a major program to upgrade the Sohe satellite launching station that began late last year. A gantry tower was raised to 55 meters by adding three new platforms to handle up to 50 meter long rockets. The existing launch pad has been upgraded to launch rockets even larger than the Unha 3 North Korea sent into space in late 2012. With the completion of the engine test, 38 North says Pyongyang may decide to test fire another rocket before the year is out. A new, even larger rocket than the Unha 3 is also reportedly under development, but the website says it'll be several years before it's fully operational. Kim Young-gyu, Arirang News. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says resuming the six-party talks on denuclearizing North Korea would be complicated but not out of the question. Meeting with his North Korean counterpart in Moscow on Wednesday, the foreign minister called on all related parties in the dialogue to take a balanced approach and refrain from abrupt actions that would polarize positions. The two Koreas, the U.S., China, Japan and Russia, began the six-party talks in 2003 with the aim of of denuclearizing Pyongyang, but the last time they, they met was in late 2008 as North Korea launched a long-range rocket in early 2009. And still no word on a bilateral summit between Korea and Japan. Korea's top diplomat spoke of the possibility but said it could only happen under one condition. That is, if Japan sincerely atones for its historical wrongdoings and wartime atrocities. Our Foreign Affairs Ministry correspondent Hwang Sung hee has more. The forecast for a summit between President Park Geun-hye and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe this year is cloudy. In an interview with Korean radio station CBS on Wednesday, Foreign Minister Yoon byung has said a show of Japanese sincerity over historical issues remains a precondition to summit talks. He added that resolving the urgent issue of Japan's wartime sexual enslavement of Korean women would be a good place to start. Yoon said measures that can be accepted by the 55 former sex slaves still alive and the international community would be regarded as measures of sincerity. His remarks follow a string of meetings between the two countries this month. Yoon held private talks with Japanese ambassador to Korea, Koro Betsho, for the first time, while President Park welcomed former Japanese Prime Minister Yoshiro Mori, who brought a personal letter from Abe. The vice foreign ministers from Korea and Japan met in Tokyo Wednesday for their first strategic dialogue since President Park took office in February of 2013. 
The frequent diplomatic exchanges raised speculation that the two neighbors were preparing for what would be the first summit between their leaders, with November's APEC summit in Beijing as the likely stage. But President Park remains adamant she will not meet with Abe until he apologizes for Tokyo's wartime atrocities. As the two sides remain wide apart on the comfort women issue, the Korean foreign minister said it will likely be some time before the sun shines again. Hwang Sang-hee, Arirang News. And about that comfort women issue, every Wednesday here in Korea, victims of Japan's sexual enslavement of women during wartime gather with their supporters to hold a rally. Now, that weekly protest has been taking place for more than two decades now, but this week's welcomed a special group of supporters. Our Kwon so reports. In front of the Japanese embassy in Seoul, at a weekly Wednesday gathering dedicated to the women who were forced into sexual slavery by the Japanese military during World War II, Japanese Christians join in. As a Japanese citizen, I want to sincerely apologize for the violation of your dignity and human rights. I want to apologize to the victims of sexual slavery and for the unresolved pain it caused. I am so very sorry. The surviving victims thanked them for coming and said it was the Japanese government that was at fault, not the Japanese people. When you go back to Japan, please tell Prime Minister Shinzo Abe to stop making these absurd remarks. I hope the truth is spread to more people so that we can find peace before we die. While the Japanese pastor's heartfelt gesture shows that there are ordinary Japanese citizens who are ashamed of the atrocities that were carried out by their country in the past, Tokyo continues to turn a deaf ear to the demands of the victims. On the same day, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said the sexual slavery issue needed to be revised in school textbooks, another sign that the Japanese government is trying to whitewash history. But he added that he has no plans to make changes to the 1993 Kono Statement, a landmark apology to the victims of wartime sexual enslavement, or publish a new one. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Shifting gears, Korea's exports to its largest trading partner, China, rebounded in September. But the real question is, will this trend continue? Connie Kim reports on the prospects for the rest of the year and the longer-term challenges Korea faces. For most Korean policymakers and businessmen, one of the most encouraging signs from September trade data is a rise in exports to China. Outgoing shipments to Korea's largest trading partner rebounded for the first time in five months. The total came in at 12.7 billion won, or roughly 12 million U.S. dollars in September, up 6.5 percent from a year earlier. More importantly, the gain came mostly in intermediary goods that are fitted by Chinese exporters in their finished products. Shipments rose by more than 50 percent for computer parts, some 32 percent for semiconductors, and 13 percent for petrochemical products. Now that's welcome news for Korea as parts and other basic components represent nearly three quarters of all of its exports to China. The trade ministry says Korea is well positioned due to the improved results and expects exports to hit an all-time high this year. Chinese exports have been on the rise since May, showing an upward trend. Trade officials say a recovery in the U.S. economy will keep boosting Chinese exports to America in the coming months, particularly in the run-up to the year-end shopping season. The Institute for International Trade says Chinese firms are now improving their own supply capacity and that Korean firms should focus on ways to differentiate themselves from Chinese suppliers. Negotiations for the Korea-China Free Trade Agreement are in the final stages, and it's expected to be signed by the end of the year and could take effect as early as next year. Connie Kim, Arirang News. In politics, the floor leader of Korea's main opposition party has decided to step down from her post after just five months at the helm. In an email sent to all members of the New Politics Alliance for Democracy this morning, Park Young Sun said it was with a heavy heart that she was resigning. She said she had gone through a difficult time as floor leader, having to give up her beliefs, honor and pride in the name of responsibility, and that now she was laying down that burden. 
Her decision follows months of political gridlock over a special bill aimed at setting up ground rules for an investigation into April's ferry disaster. And it comes just two days after the ruling in Maine opposition parties reached a compromise on this controversial bill. Now, protest leaders in Hong Kong are clear on what they want. They have demanded that the region's uh, chief executive step down by Thursday. China is closely monitoring the situation and is very firm in its stance, too. Our Kim Min-ji reports. Pro-democracy protesters have warned of further action if Hong Kong's chief executive does not step down by Thursday evening. Massive crowds entered a standoff with police as they rallied outside CY Leung's office gates overnight. Protesters say they will occupy government buildings if their demands aren't met. They also want universal suffrage in Hong Kong's 2017 elections and for Beijing to abandon its plan to vet candidates for the post of chief executive. Uh, I don't know how long, but I think that every Hong Kongers uh, will spend all their efforts to achieve what they want and voice out their opinion until the government gets action and respond our needs. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry at a joint press conference with his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi in Washington called on Hong Kong authorities to exercise restraint in the face of protests. Wang was curt in his response. The Chinese government has very firmly and clearly stated its position. Hong Kong affairs are China's internal affairs. All countries should respect China's sovereignty. Wang added that illegal acts that violate public order would not be tolerated in any society. If protesters follow through on their pledge to storm government buildings, there are mounting fears of violent clashes. China's official state newspaper, The People's Daily, warned of unimaginable consequences should the protests persist, while state-run television in Hong Kong said residents should support their local authorities who are only trying to restore social order as soon as possible. Kim min Arirang News. The director of Dallas County's health department says a second person is being monitored for an Ebola infection in the United States, a person who had close contact with Thomas Eric Duncan. Now, Duncan is the man confirmed by the CDC as America's first Ebola patient. Federal health officials have been tracking people who came in contact with him during the days he showed symptoms. Now, Duncan was reportedly not sick during his flight from Liberia to Dallas last month, but when he did fall ill a few days later, the local hospital he checked into released him with antibiotics, even though he had informed staff of his recent trip to Liberia. Hospital officials say Duncan's condition has been improving since he was placed in isolation on Sunday. We are hearing about a lot of firsts in this year's Asian Games taking place in Incheon, and we start today's coverage with yet another first for South Korea. Our sports guru, Song ji Sun will tell us all about it. So ji on the first ever silver in rhythmic uh, gymnastics. Right, South Korea went two spots higher than they did in the Asian Games four years ago, winning the silver here in Incheon 2014. South Korea's star athlete, gymnast, and this year's ASEAN ambassador, Hoon Yeon Jae, she played a huge part in helping the team make the podium this time. She exercised a clean-looking routine in all four routines, leading all the siblings to score 71.732 points in the team final. The team made up of four gymnasts performs 12 routines, with the top 10 scores added up as the team final score. South Korea was placed second for the first time at the ASEAN, with slightly over 464 points, six points behind Uzbekistan, who took the gold. The bronze medal went to Kazakhstan. Now 16 players, two each from eight countries, got their seat for the individual final tonight from adding up the top three scores from the four routines performed at last night's event. Now Son's medal chances and the individual have improved a lot as her Chinese rival Dong Sen Yue is feeling under the weather, telling reporters she caught a cold after flying straight into Korea from the World Championships. 
So whether Sun Yun Jae will be able to snatch uh, that much-awaited gold mm -hmm. medal, we'll have to wait until tonight, right? Now, mm -hmm. let's move on to women's football. North Korea showcased some teamwork on the field in the final last night. Tell us all about that. Right, a North Korean squad beat Japan, which is one of the most strongest team in women's football, and they beat Japan 3-1 in a very convincing victory. And Kim Young Mi, Rao Eun Shim, and Ho Eun Byer scored one goal each to give their country their third Asian Games title and exacting sporting revenge on Japan, who beat them in the final back in 2010. And speaking after this game, North Korean team coach Kim Gwang Min thanked North Korean leader Kim Jong Un, saying the team was very thankful and grateful for his quote support and action, affection for the squad. The North Korean coach added that he had hoped for an all Korean final and also praised the South Korean fans for cheering for the Pyongyang team. South Korea won the bronze, beating Vietnam 3 0 to take the bronze for the second straight time. All right, we only have uh, two days left for competitions, but never say it's over until it's really <laughs> over, right? So what are some of the events scheduled for today? I'm sure a lot of female and male fans will tune in to Sonyeonja's competition while she will attempt to win the gold and the individual all-around final after winning the bronze four years ago in Kwangso 2010. After qualifying first last night, she will repeat her routines for the individual all-around final that starts at 6 p.m. Korea time. Also look out for some golden kick actions in Taekwondo as well because we have four finals coming up for four different weight categories, two for men and two for women. Coming up after that at quarter to eight is what I think is one of the most exciting events you can watch at a major sporting event, which is the men's 4x100 meter relay. We must also not forget the historic inter-Korean football match final tonight between the men's team, which will be the first time the two Koreas have played each other in men's football in 36 years. That match is scheduled for 8 p.m. Korea time. All right, so a lot of people will, of course, be looking forward to that match as well. Now let's uh, hope it will become an exciting game. Jisun, mm -hmm. thank you as always for covering the Inchon Asian Games, and we'll see you later on our newscast. All of the day's important events, events close to home and around the world. Join Na Hyung Young, live from Seoul. If you're considering joining the military or are just simply curious about what life is like as a member of the Korean Armed Forces, here's a chance to get a first-hand experience. Our Kim Hyun Bin tells us all about this year's Ground Forces Festival. Since all able-bodied men in Korea are required to serve in the military, they are well aware of what it's like to live as a cadet, day in and day out. But that leaves a large segment of the population, women and children included, that aren't. To enhance understanding, the Army headquarters opened the 12th Ground Forces Festival in Kaedong City this week under the theme, An Army That Connects With The People. The Ground Forces Festival is the country's largest military fair. It offers visitors a chance to see, hear and experience all aspects of the Army. There are 51 events people can take part in. People can get in the cockpit of an attack helicopter or inside tanks, in addition to many other hands-on activities. One of the most popular sections is a shooting range, where people can fire off a real rifle using blank rounds. Special military performances and stunts are also scheduled throughout the day. All men must go to the army and get to experience this, but women cannot. Through this festival, we can get a glimpse of what soldiers go through. It was fun. Those that have gone so far have enjoyed the experience. My kids are curious about the life of military personnel and they wanted to ride on the helicopter and tanks. They had the chance to do so and loved it. I would like to give my sincere gratitude to the army, the Ministry of National Defense and all the soldiers helping out. There's also a boot camp arena where one can test their might and agility. 
The mock towers, which are used for parachute training, are another popular attraction, where people can jump from a height of 11 meters. The festival runs through this Sunday, October 5th. Kim Abin, Arirang News, Kedong City. And it's that time of the year when movie fanatics flock to Busan. The 19th installment of the Busan International Film Festival will kickstart some 10 days of events later today. Our cultural correspondent Park ji won has a sneak peek into the event. Preparations are ongoing at the Busan Cinema Center, the main venue of the annual film festival, to greet dozens of film stars and film lovers from all over the world. Now in its 19th installment, this year's Busan International Film Festival opens this Thursday evening. 314 films from nearly 80 countries will be shown at seven theaters in this southern harbor city throughout the 10-day event. To celebrate this year's grand opening, an Eve celebration took place Wednesday at Biff Square in Nampodong, the birthplace of the festival back in 1996. I sincerely congratulate the opening of the 19th BIFF. Please support our film, the tenor Lyrico Spinto. I came to celebrate the opening of the Busan International Film Festival. I'm very happy to be here. As a Busan resident, I'm proud to see this international film festival being held in the city, and I wish it many more successful years to come. Taiwanese film director Tu Jianyu's international premiere, Paradise in Service, will open the festival. Hong Kong director Yi Po Chung's comedy and melodrama, Gangster Payday, will be the festival's closing film. Park ji Arirang News, Busan. Good afternoon, I'm Yi Ji Hyun here with your latest weather updates. It's a mostly to partly cloudy day with a chance of passing showers. So between 5 and 30 millimeters of precipitation is expected across the nation. So yes, we won't be getting that much rain. But as we all know, Autumn rain triggers cooler air to the nation, so temperatures will only top out in the low 20s in many areas. On that note, let's take a closer look at the readings for today. Now, the afternoon highs in Seoul will only rise to 22, while Taewoo and Gwangju will peak at 23 and 25, and Busan will rise to 25 later on. Now, for other regions, it looks like down on Jeju Island will peak at 24, Daejeon and Tokyo will peak at 23 and 21, and Mount Kungang tops out at 14. Now, over in Incheon, where the Asian Games are being held, it will be a rainy and cool day with a highs picking to 20 this afternoon, so it should be slightly cooler than here in the capital. And tomorrow is Friday and also a National Foundation Day of Korea, which is a national holiday. And thankfully, the weather should cooperate with any plans that you have. Mostly to poorly sunny skies will be featured under mild conditions. But please do notice a bit cooler morning lows and dress accordingly uh, to avoid catching a cold. Well, that's all for Korea, and here's international weather for viewers around the world.
And that's all we have for now. Thank you for watching. Our next newscast will be at 4 p.m. Korea time. I'll see you then.